best way for you to learn another language. Look no feather. I'm going to show you how to use Duolingo for schools. I'm Madame Sensei. I teach Spanish, French, and Japanese to high schoolers out here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. And today I'm going to talk about a couple of ways that I've been using Duolingo ABC in my language classrooms. Now Duolingo ABC is really super cute. It's for very young people, but I've got high schoolers and they absolutely adore it. Okay, but but it's meant to teach kindergartners how to read English. And my students are high schoolers learning how to read French, Spanish, and or Japanese. So, but hey, look at how cute the pictures are. They're so adorable. So I was like, how can I use this in my classroom? So first thing, I needed more FVR books for my Spanish class. I didn't have, somehow I had a million French books. I have a million Japanese books. Initially, when I first started teaching Spanish, I didn't have all that many Spanish books and I needed some more and I don't have a huge budget. So you can see right here, I just had my secretary print off my translations and I had her laminate them for me and bind them and she really loved doing that. She said it was a great project. So if, if you are a member of the Duolingo Educators Network and please join the Duolingo Educators Network, they are great at supporting us. I have put in our um, shared Google Drive. I've put all the stories I've translated into Japanese, into French, into Spanish. I've done uh, all of level one and I think all of level two by now. So this is just an example. I just took off the English at the bottom and I just put on whatever language I'm translating into. And the nice thing about this I discovered is that, you know, my students need a little bit of scaffolding. My Spanish students are only Spanish one. And so I can put little hints about what the words are, or I can put pictures down here in the words so they can figure out, it's like a little dictionary, right? So that was good scaffolding for when they're reading. All right, so that's the, the easiest thing to do, it cost you zero pennies and you have more books to read in your class. Idea number two, and actually my favorite thing, my absolute favorite thing to do with Duolingo ABC, I'm really proud of my students. Pictures are so cute. I just show them the pictures and I cut off the English on the bottom and I'm like, hey guys, what's going on in the story here? Write me a caption to this picture of what's going on. You can see here, I've got a lot of verbs. And actually, one of the things, I talk about this on another video, um, one of the things that I think is really powerful for my students is following Zipf's law, that is the law of frequency of words in a language. I teach my students the top 50 verbs by frequency. My theory, ahem, is that if the students know 50 verbs, that's only 50 verbs, that's not a lot. They know what they mean and they know how to conjugate those 50 verbs for the romance languages. My Japanese students don't have to worry about that because they only inflect. But if they just know 50 verbs, they can fake their way through any conversation. They can read pretty much anything you throw in front of them with only 50 verbs. So I really need them to have more contact with those verbs to conjugate them. And instead of doing boring, here's a worksheet, fill in the worksheet, I'd rather have them producing language. So you can see I've taken, and these are all, some of them I labeled do ABC and some of them I just got bored and I just said what they are. I, I grouped the verbs by how they work. Okay, like I decided that mettre, sentir, sortir, I don't know why I cut, cut off the R there, um, that they work kind of the same. All right, a clear dear, they both add a letter on the right-hand side of the conjugation chart. Uh, connaître, paraître, they both turn into S's for reasons, right? Venir, tenir, retenir, soutenir, obtenir, souvenir. Um, they all get that tricky IE. Okay, so I, I grouped them together as I teach the conjugation so that using the keychain method of memorization, the students remember it better. And then I've just chosen a random story. And I tell the students, okay, you're going to use maître, sentir, sortir here. And then I, they always want the, uh, uh, comment dit-on, 
the dog food. And so I'll, um, I'll tell them what those words are. And generally by this point I've, I've predicted, but then, you know, there's all this white space here. So I'm writing in front of my students as they ask me what everything is. Okay. And then the students just write whatever the heck they want to write using those verbs. Okay. Here's one for Spanish class. And this is my Spanish one class. And so I'm like, look, I'm going to teach you guys how to code switch. You can throw in the English nouns, but I want you using these verbs. Okay. And so here we go. And I gave them some words that they might ask for. And of course they always fool me by asking for more. All right. Now this French one and Spanish one, that's all I'm showing you right now. We're in October of the new school year. So they've only been in class two months and I'm showing you the kind of stuff that they're writing. Okay. So the student obviously left off the accent mark here. I don't care. Look at this. Look at how well they're conjugating. Look at the, these sentences are like complete sentences. All right. So that student's hyper advanced. But look at this. This student's having trouble conjugating. All right. The student has fofo to fall. That's okay. They remembered the verb. They knew what they wanted to say. Somebody who's talking to them is going to understand what they're saying. If they take the stamps test, stamps test is going to give them a credit for French already. They're going to say, you're at novice mid already in the middle of October in the first year of school. Okay, here, they didn't, they didn't match um, être to the, the two subject, the two people subject. All right, that's okay. They are communicating. They're, look at, I'm just so amazed at my students. I'm so, so proud of them. This student, uh, we haven't talked about vouloir yet. They don't know how to conjugate vouloir. That was a pretty good guess. That was a pretty darn good guess. And and I'm just happy with them. Look at that. Okay. Um, okay, this one put the, the verb in the wrong place. That's okay. Look, they, they knew that no pa goes around the verb. Yay. <laughs> okay. They, I, I told them they could code switch. They could throw in English if they needed to. So I just, I'm so proud of them. Oh, they said, ah, fatigue instead of a fatigue. But you know what? They, they could communicate with this. This is, uh, I could, I could let them loose in France and they would do just fine. So that's just, I, I'm just so much enjoying this. I feel like my students are so geniuses. I don't know. Uh, thanks for watching. Please join us in the Duolingo Educators Network. We bounce ideas off of each other. Duolingo as a company is very supportive of teachers. And so they're always there to to answer questions and um, to listen to our feedback and everything. So hope to see you there.